Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. Welcome to my class. This is lecture number 20. In this lecture, we'll, we will be discussing the major socio-religious reform movements originated in the first half of the 18th century. And before going to discuss the major socio-religious reform movements originated in India, during the first half of the 18th century, let us have a look at the difference between the two societies, Indian society and the British society. The British society as a result of enlightenment and renaissance adopted rationalism and scientific temper in their approach. Then what was the characteristic features of 18th century Indian society. The Indian society in 18th century was plagued by various superstitious beliefs and practices such as idol and image worship, caste system. The religion got divided into a number of caste and subcaste, untouchability, don't touch me attitude. The upper caste considered the lower caste as untouchables. Sadi, burning of the widow in the funeral fire of the husband. It came to be known as the practice of Sadi. Female infanticide. The people welcomed the birth of son rather than female was considered as burden by the parents. So, female at the young age were poisoned to death. Polytheism, polytheism means the worship of a number of gods at a time. Child marriage, even children ended into wedlock, even pre puberty times. These were the evil practices and superstitious beliefs which had crept in. Indian society during the first half of the 18th century. The condition of women was miserable. Women were considered as subordinate in intellect to men. And in this background, what was the attitude of the British government towards these evil practices and superstitious beliefs? in 18th century. The English East India Company adopted the policy of non-intervention in the social affairs of the Indians. What was the reason behind the non-intervention of the British in the social matters of the Indians? There were many reasons behind the non-intervention of the British in the social affairs of the Indians during the first half of the 18th century. Warren Hastings, you know that he was the first Governor General of Bengal. It was the period of Warren Hastings, he gave more attention to Orientalism. Orientalism means that more attention was paid to the study of the culture of the Indians, to know the language of the Indians, rather than the imposition of Western culture and ideas on society. This type of action came into known as Orientalism. Why did Warren Hastings promote Orientalism? 
or the study of the Orient or India, the knowledge of Indian languages, Indian culture and Indian history were required for the effective administration of the Indians. That is why Warren Hastings gave more attention to Orientalism. And in order to attain his objectives of the knowledge about Indians to administer them effectively, he started Calcutta Madrasa in Calcutta in 1781. Asiatic Society of Bengal was started during the period of Warren Hastings in 1784. The society was created for the study of Indology, Indian culture, Indian history and Indian languages. In Benares, Benares Sanskrit College was founded by Jonathan Dangan in 1791. Jonathan Dangan was the British resident at Benares and it was Dangan who created the Sanskrit college. It was for the promotion of the study of Sanskrit at Benares. Asiatic society gave importance to the study of Indian history, Indian culture and Indian languages. The Madrasa gave importance to the study of the Muhammadans. It was founded by Warren Hastings in 1781 at Calcutta. But with the end of the period of Warren Hastings, a change took place with regard to the attitude of the British towards the social problems of the Indians. This change was brought into effect by evangelicalists utilitarians and free trade thinkers in Britain. They exercised pressure on the British government to interfere with the social affairs of the Indians. The utilitarians, they demanded appropriate social engineering and authoritarian reforms to reform the Indian society which had been plagued, plagued by many social evils and superstitious beliefs and practices. What was the demand of the evangelicalist? The evangelicalist should, stood for governmental intervention for the liberation of the Indian society from these evil practices and superstitious beliefs. What about a free trade? Thingers. The free trade thinkers also demanded governmental intervention to make the Indian economy free by ensuring free flow of goods and services, by removing the duties. These were the demands of the utilitarians evangelicals and free trade thinkers in Britain. But still, the company did not want it to interfere the social affairs of the Indians because the company feared adverse reaction from the native Indians. If the company involved in the social affairs of the Indians. Secondly, the company was not able to do this until and unless a section of the Indian society came forward to support the English East India Company, these social reforms. These were the two reasons why the English East India Company did not interfere with the evil practices of Indian society. But this status changed with the introduction of the English system of education in India. The English educated Indians with the introduction of the English education, rationalist thinking, scientific approach began to develop among the 
English educated Indians. They began to test the social evils and superstitious beliefs which had crept in Indian society. It provided the background, the introduction of the English system of education provided the background behind the rise of socio-religious reform movements in the 18th century India. The first half of the 19th century witnessed the emergence of a number of socio-religious reform movements. It included Brahma Samaj and the Young Bengal movement. First of all, let us discuss the socio-religious reform movement originated in the first half of the 19th century. It was Brahma Samaj under the leadership of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Raja Ram Mohan Roy, he was one of the pioneers argued for the introduction of the English system of education. It was because of this in the 19th century witnessed the introduction of the English system of education and it resulted the development of rationalism and scientific temper among the Indians. The Ajara Mohan Roy wanted his countrymen to accept scientific and rationalist approach. That is why he supported the Thomas Babington Macaulay when he introduced the English system of learning in India in 1835. Even though he died in 1833, he, before his death in 1833, Rajara Mohan Roy strongly argued for the introduction of the English system of education. This argument bore fruit only in 1835 when Thomas Babington Macaulay introduced the English system of learning in India. His thought was the synthesis of the philosophy of the East and the West. He was a multilinguist. Raja Ramohan Roy was a multilinguist, well versed in different languages like Sanskrit, Persian, Arabic, English, French, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. Benares was the center of Sanskrit learning, where in 1781, Jonathan Duncan founded the Banaras Sanskrit College. He studied Sanskrit literature and Hindu philosophy at Varanasi, the center of the learning of the Hindus. He studied Quran, Persian, and Arabic literature at Pune. In addition to Hinduism, Rajara Mohan Roy was also well acquainted with Jainism and other religious movements and sects in the country. It was for the study of Bible he learnt Greek and Hebrew. In 1814, Rajara Mogan Roy settled at Calcutta and by advocating a scientific thought and rationalistic approach, he attracted a band of young followers. In 1815, Rajara Mohan Roy founded Atmiya Safa. What was the reason behind the foundation of Atmiya Safa by Rajara Mohan Roy? He founded Atmiya Safa to fight against the religious and social practices among the Hindu community in Bengal. He mainly attacked against the social evils like uh, idol worship, rigidity of the caste and the meaningless rituals and the practices against which Raja Ramogan Roy stubbornly fought. However, his greatest attack was against the practice of Sadi, the banning of the widow in the funeral fire of the husband. 
he also condemned the priestly class for promoting this irrational religious rituals and the practices the brahmins who used to serve as intermediary between the men and the gods and it was the brahmins who promoted these ritual practices and for which raja ram mohan roy condemned them for the promotion of these ceremonies and rituals he argued that all the principal texts of the hindus preached monotheism monotheism means the worship of a single god but the 18th and 19th century in india witnessed the worship of polytheism the people used to worship more than one god he published a bengali translation of the vedas and the major five upanishads he also translated into bengali language to prove his argument that the ancient hindu texts both the vedas as well as the upanishads promoted monotheism and it was to spread this point among the bengalis he translated upanishads and these vedas into bengali language he argued that the philosophy of vedanta that is a philosophy in vedic text and upanishads or based on the principle of reason the application of reason and scientific thought of raja ram mohan roy did not did not confine among the hinduism alone he began to apply rationalism and scientific thought to other religions as well he applied it among the christianity he questioned the blind faith and the miracles in the christianity he published his work precepts of jesus in this book he separated the moral philosophical message of the new testament as well as the miracle stories he praised the moral and the philosophical message of the new testament while he condemned the miracle stories of the new testament his criticism of the miracle stories of the new testament attracted reaction from the christian missionaries while at the same time he criticized the miracle stories of the new testament he stood for the incorporation of the moral message of the christianity into hinduism from this it is clear that he was not a strict follower of india's past nor blindly following the philosophy of the west he applied reason and rationality to hindu philosophy as well as to the christianity and he used it to make a distinction between the miracle stories as well as the moral messages and the philosophies be it hinduism or it in christianity it simply means that he tested everything raja ram mohan roy's criticism of the christianity and adverse reaction from the christian missionaries from this it is clear that he either did not want it to follow the western philosophical thought nor the hindus ancient past without applying rationalism raja ram mohan roy tested everything both 
Hindus ancient text as well as Christianity by applying rationalism and scientific approach. From the West, he wanted to learn two principles. What were these two principles? Raja Ramohan Roy wanted to learn from West. It was scientific approach and rationalism. Scientific approach, everything began to be tested based on scientific observation and analysis. Rationalism was applied whether it was right or wrong. These two principles which Tajara Mohanroi began to use in testing both Hinduism as well as Christianity. He did not want the imposition of the Western culture on the Indian society. But instead of the imposition of the Western society in India, Rajara Mohan Roy stood for the reformation of the Hindu society by using scientific timber, reason and rationalism. He opposed the suppression of the Hindu religion by Christian missionaries in order to get converts from Hinduism. The Christian missionaries pictured Hindu religion in poor light and they attracted Hindus into Christianity, especially the lower caste from whom the Christian missionaries got majority of the converts. <coughs> Even though he did not want to engage quarrel with this Christian, Christian missionaries, but rather Raja Ramakondroy wanted to maintain religious harmony with the other religions. He wanted to take the best of all the religions, whether it was Christianity or Hinduism or any other religion. But the criticism of Rajara Mohan Roy of the evil practices of Hinduism attracted adverse reaction from the orthodox section of the Indian society. Especially his criticism of the worship of idols as well as his admiration of the moral message and the philosophy of the Christianity. These attracted adverse reaction from the orthodox section of the Hindu society. This orthodox section of the Hindu society organized social boycott against Raja Ramohan Roy. He, even his mother was joined with this orthodox section of the Hindu society. It was highly condemnable. He was branded as an outcast and a heretic by these orthodox sections of the Hindu society. They were not ready to accept the ideas of Rajara Mohan Roy, who began to question the evil practices and the social evils which had crept in Indian society. And in 1828, to crown all his efforts, he founded the Brahma Safa. It was a new religious society founded by him earlier in 1815. He founded Atmiya Safa to fight against the evil practices in Hindu society. But in 1828, another society was founded by Raja Ramohan Roy. Earlier, it came into known as Brahma Safa, but later, change in nomenclature was made from Brahma Safa, it came into known as Brahma Samaj. What was the main purpose of the new society founded by Raja Ram Mohan Roy in 1828? It was to purify Hinduism of the social evils and the practices which had corrupted in Hindu society 
and to preach the idea of monotheism. Monotheism which means worship of a single God. Why? During this time, that is in the first half of the 19th century, polytheism spread among the Hindus, that is worship of a number of gods and goddesses. The new society founded by Rajara Mohan Roy, Brahma Samaj, was based on two pillars. One pillar was reason, everything began to be tested by, by using reason and secondly the Vedas and Upanishads. He took the philosophy and the moral messages from these Vedic texts as well as Upanishads. Upanishads were the philosophical work. But in addition to these ideas from these Vedas and the Hindu philosophical works of the Upanishads, he adopted teachings of other religions as well. The Brahma Samaj criticized idol worship and it unleashed is a strongest reaction against the practice of evil practice of sadi that is burning of the widow in the funeral fire of the husband it attracted severe criticism from raja ramohan roy he crusaded against the evil practice of sadi among the hindus He argued that the Hindu religion had been against the evil practice of Sadi by citing ancient sacred textbooks of the Hindus. But the people, especially the orthodox section of the society, was not ready to accept the arguments made by Raja Ramohan Roy. Even he visited the burning guts of Calcutta and tried to pursue the people from committing sadi. He brought it together those people who stood for against, he stood against the evil practice of sadi together. And when William, William Bendick the governor general sending his proposal to the British government to consider the plan of abolishing Sadi in Bengal. What did these orthodox Hindus do when Bendik, the governor general, sent his proposal to abolish the evil practice of Sadi in Bengal? The orthodox section of the Hindu society sent petitions to the British Parliament demanding not to accept the proposal sent by William Wendick to abolish the evil practice of Sadi. But against a counter petition was sent by Raja Ramohan Roy to the British Parliament demanding the abolition of the evil practice of Sadi. And following the efforts made by Rajara Mohan Roy and the Governor General William Bendik, Sadi was abolished in Bengal in 1829. He also stood for the welfare of the women. The orthodox Hindus considered that women were inferior in intellect as well as in a moral sense to men. But Rajara Mogan Roy opposed that women were subordinated to men. He argued for the equality of status both for men and women. He also unleashed his attack against the practice of polygamy 
having more than one wife. He argued for the adoption of the monogamy in Hindu society. He also argued that in order to improve the position of women, the right to property and inheritance would be given to women. He turned his attention next towards the introduction of the modern education in India. For the spreading of modern education, he started Hindu college, the famous Hindu college in Calcutta in 1817 along with David Hare. He was an Anglo-Indian with whom Dajara Mohan Roy founded the famous Hindu college in 1817. In addition to the creation of the Hindu college, he also maintained, a, maintained an English school in Calcutta since 1817. In these institutions started by Dajara Mohan Roy, Western learning and Oriental learning were imparted. Western learning means the study of European science, European mathematics, European literature, European mechanics were used to teach in these institutions. Even the philosophy of Voltaire was taught in these institutions. Western philosophy was given importance. In 1825, he founded another institution, Vedanta College. Indian learning as well as Western and physical sciences were given more importance in the teaching in the institution of Vedanta College founded by Rajara Mohan Roy in 1825. He also opposed it the evil practice of the caste system. The Hindu religion got divided into a number of castes and subcastes. He argued that it was because of the division of the Hindu society into different castes. Patriotic feeling did not develop among the Indians. He also published journals in Bengali, Persian, Hindi and English in order to spread his message as well as rationalistic and scientific approach among the people. It was for the spread of scientific, literary and political knowledge. Dajara Mohan Roy used these journals. In addition to the social evils and practices, he turned his attention to the political and economic problems of the Indians as well. He did not confine his attention to the social problems only. What were the economic and political demands made by Raja Ramohan Roy? He condemned the oppressive practices of the Semintals. You recall that the permanent land revenue system settlement which was introduced in Bengal made the life of the peasants miserable. The Semindars oppressed these peasants in several ways. He demanded the abolition of these oppressive practices of the Semindars against the peasants. He also protested against the imposition of the taxes on tax-free lands. Earlier, the temples and the mosques enjoyed exemption from the payment of tax. But the British began to impose taxes on these religious institutions run by Hindus as well as Muslims. He also stood for the abolition of the trading rights of the English East India Company, which monopolized trade. 
he also argued for the abolition of the imposition of high import duties on Indian goods exported from India to Britain in order to prevent the export of Indian goods from India to Britain. He demanded the appointment of Indians to the higher offices of judiciary, civil service and the military. As you know that all higher posters were exclusively reserved for the Britishers by the British government. Indians were not appointed to the higher posters. Rajara Mohan Roy demanded the appointment of Indians to the higher posters of the English East India Company. You recall that it was during the period of Warren Hastings and later the civil servants enjoyed both executive and judicial powers. The district collector, he acted as the head of the revenue administration as well as enjoyed judicial powers. He demanded the separation of the executive and the judiciary. Trial by jury as well like the English system of trial or prosecution and the judicial equality between Indians and Europeans. What judicial inequality did exist? The Indian judges and magistrates were not able to try European culprits. The European culprits could be prosecuted or tried in courts presided over by European judges. Rajara Mohan Roy died in 1833. Bithik is one of the prominent personality of India died. Even though he died in 1833, one of his wishes was the introduction of the English system of education in India. It came into effect in 1835. With the Macaulay Minute, with the Macaulay Minute of 1835, English system of learning was introduced in India by Governor General of India. William Bendick. Now going to the another socio-religious reform movement, it was Young Bengal movement. A radical trend emerged among the Bengali intellectuals in late 1820s and 1830s. In the beginning of the 19th century, they came into known as Young Bengal Movement. Who was the leader of this Young Bengal Movement? It was Henry Vivian de Rosia, an Anglo-Indian. Henry Vivian de Rosia was the leader of the Young Bengal Movement. He was born in 1809 in Bengal. After the education he joined, as a teacher in Hindu college, which was founded by Rajara Mohan Roy. He served as the teacher from 1826 to 1831 at a Hindu college. He was inspired by the ideals of the French Revolution, liberty, equality, and freedom. These were the ideals which inspired Henry Vivian de Rosia. He used to spread these messages among his students. The followers of Hindu, the, so the followers of Henry Vivian de Rosia came in known as the Rosians. But he was removed from the Hindu college in 1831 because of his the adoption of the radical views. But he died soon. He died at the young age of 22. However, he died in 1831. His followers, popularly known as the Rosians, 
who stubbornly opposed the evil practices and the traditions which had crept in Hindu society. The, the Rosians' main demand was the protection of the rights of women as well as in order to improve the status of women, education should be imparted to them. These were the main demands put forward by the followers of Henry Vivian de Rosia. Even though their movement did not make much advancement because of the social circumstances and the conditions which had been in existence in Bengal. And on their part, they also failed to maintain link with the people. However, they were able to carry forward the ideals of Rajara Mohan Roy, that is educating the people on the social, economic and the political questions of the time. They began to spread these ideals through newspapers, pamphlets and public associations. Like Rajara Mohan Roy, they turned their attention to the non-social aspects as well. They demanded revision of the company's charter and freedom of press and more civilized treatment to the Indian laborers in other British colonies. Indian laborers were sent by English East India Company to other colonies of Britain in other part of the world. They also demanded trial by jury as in the case of the English legal system. And like Rajara Mohan Roy, the Rosians also demanded to abolish the oppressive practices adopted by the Semintards against the peasants. The, like Rajara Mohan Roy, the, the Rosians also demanded the appointment of Indians in higher offices and the posters of the English East India Company. Surendranath Banerjee, he was later became one of the prominent nationalist leaders of India, providing leadership into nationalist movement against the British, described the Rosians as the pioneers of the modern civilization in Bengal. This was the argument made by Surendranath Banerjee. Now, another socio-religious reformers, Devendranath Tagore and Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar. It was Devendranath Tagore. He was the father of Devendranath Tagore. He revitalized Brahma Samaj. In 1839, Devendranath Tagore founded Tattu Bodhini Safa. He founded the Tattu Bodhini Sava for the spread of the ideas of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Later, Ishar Jandra Vidyasagar and the followers of Henry Vivian de Rosia also joined with Devendra Nath Tagore. Tattu Bodhini Sava and its publication, Tattu Bodhini Patriya. It began to study the rationalist study of the India's past, and this study was appeared in Bengali language. This publication was started for developing rationalism and scientific approach among the people in Bengal. In 1843, Devendranath Tagore, he reorganized Brahma Samaj and he gave it a new look. Under Devendranath Tagore, Brahma Samaj demanded widow remarriage, 
earlier widows did not have the legal right to remarry in hindu society abolition of polygamy having more than one wife women's education improvement of the condition of the peasants these were the demands made by brahma samaj under the leadership of devendranath tagore next coming to another reformer it was ishwar chandra vidyasagar he was born in 1820 struggling his life he earned higher education and reached the higher position of principal in 1851 in sanskrit college however he was a teacher in sanskrit he opened his mind to accept the western ideas as well but later he resigned from government service because of the undue political interference earlier only the brahmins were allowed to study a sanskrit but ishwar chandra vidyasagar opened the gates of the college for the study of the sanskrit to the non brahmin as well he also wanted to break a priestly monopoly he wanted to allow the non brahmins also to study the vedas earlier only the brahmins enjoyed a monopoly in studying the vedic text along with the study of sanskrit he also promoted the study of western thought however ishwar chandra vidyasagar is ever remembered for his contribution for the upliftment of women he waged a long standing struggle for widow remarriage he submitted petitions whenever possible for legalizing widow remarriage in hindu society widows were not allowed to remarry but this practice had been in existence in other religions because of the efforts taken by ishwar chandra vidyasagar widow remarriage act was introduced in 1856 it legalized widow remarriage among the hindus the first lawful hindu remarriage took place among the upper caste in calcutta it was celebrated under the leadership of ishwar chandra vidyasagar the first widow remarriage after the introduction of the widow remarriage act took place on 7 december 1856 this remarriage took place with the presence and the inspiration and supervision of ishwar chandra vidyasagar between 1856 1860 video remarriages were performed with the strenuous efforts taken by ishwar chandra vidyasagar he also protested against the practice of child marriage and polygamy sometimes children ended in the wedlock even before attaining puberty polygamy was practiced especially rich men having more than one wife in order to improve the status of women ishwar chandra vidyasagar stood for the introduction of the education among women during his service as inspector of schools he organized 35 girls schools in order to impart education to girls 
most of these schools were run at his own cost he was the secretary of the bedoun girls school this school was founded in 1849 it was founded for spreading education among girls now coming to western india from bengal pioneers of reform movements in western india bal shastri jambegar he was the first reformers in bombay in the second decade of the 19th century he attacked brahmanical orthodoxy and he tried to reform hinduism by ridding of the evil practices which had kept in hindu society in 1832 he started a weekly darpan to provide scientific approach and rationalism durga ram mehta ji he founded paramahansa mandali in 1849 in bombay they were the believers of monotheism and they propagated the idea of worship of one god they also wanted the evil practice of the caste system which had been in existence in hindu society the members of this group used to take food cooked by the lower caste people in order to break the caste rules the mandalis also believed in widow remarriage and education for women the branches of mandalis were created in pune and satara another social organization founded in bombay presidency was students literary and scientific society it was founded in the middle of the 19th century in 1848 it was founded by several young educated men in bombay they used it to organize and deliver lectures on popular science and the major social questions their main intention was to start schools for imparting education to women in 1851 another prominent social reformer of bombay presidency jodiva phule he started a girl school in pune later many schools were started with the support of jagannath changar seth and bawa daji jodirao phule also argued for widow remarriage in bombay presidency another reformer vishnu shastri he founded widow remarriage association in 1850s that is in the middle of the 19th century karson das mulji he started satyaprakash in gujarat gujarati in 1852 it was created for the propagation of the widow remarriage and the reformer was gobal hari deshmukh he popularly known as loga hidavadi he advocated the reorganization of hindu society on rationalism secular values 
and modern humanistic ideas. Another reformer was Dada Bai Navaroji. He started Parsi Law Association for a uniform laws relating to inheritance and marriage among the Parsis. During the British period, during the first half of the 19th century, the British introduced major legislative reforms on social matters. It was abolition of Sadi in 1829 in Bengal, abolition of slavery in 1843, and Widow Remarriage Act was passed in 1856. Now, the major questions. Thank you, students, for watching my class. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled, in all of its adaptations almost, as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty-handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone wiet, and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman, and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, It was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today, because this evening, I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet. <laughs>